In a deal that could have big implications not only for their own brand, but for other wrestling companies as well, and, and really already is having big implications, since a ton of people lost their jobs this week, Anthem Sports, the parent company of Impact Wrestling, has closed the deal on buying a majority stake in HDNet LLC, the parent company of Access Television. Always nice to see two parents coming together. That's literally how all of us were born. But no. See, this is what happens when I open the show with a story about Bang Bros. I just, I get carried away. But the deal includes Access TV's library of wrestling and MMA content. Mark Cuban uh, will remain an equity partner and joining in as a new investor. Get a load of this. Is none other than Steve Harvey. Yes, that Steve Harvey, comedian Steve Harvey, Family Feud host Steve Harvey. He now has a seat on the board of uh, of Anthem, of Anthem's board of directors. Uh, Impact, I, you know, when I first heard this news, because this, this was not completely out of left field, uh, there have been rumors for months that there was some kind of deal being worked on that might bring Impact to access, and then it was like, well, wait a minute, Anthem is actually looking to buy access. And then the deal fell apart, but then it was back, uh, you know, it was back on path and it might actually happen. And this week it became official. And I heard this and I, my first thought, and this is what I tweeted out, I just said, Impact is going to outlive all of us. <laughs> like, think of all of the different regimes over the years. Pre-Dixie, Dixie, post-Dixie, post the different talent rosters, the different networks, the, all the different days of the week that the show is aired... And yet they persist. They've already outlast. They've long since outlasted WCW, unless you go back to the Crockett. But you do post Crockett, they've already outlived WCW. They may well outlast Ring of Honor, if rumors are are to be believed that Anthem may be interested in buying ROH from Sinclair. That's another rumor that started this week. Uh, I have no idea where it originated from. There is no evidence that this is true or that there are any kind of discussions ongoing between Sinclair and Anthem. So let me just first get that out of the way. Uh, it is only a rumor at this point. One that I personally question, if only because Ring of Honor, I mean, Ring of Honor is a drop in the bucket for Sinclair. And it makes money for them. And Sinclair just acquired a whole bunch of Fox Sports affiliates, and they're likely going to begin airing Ring of Honor in those markets very soon, which is more content for them to produce and put on the airwaves there. They're doling out a lot of money on talent contracts to sign people to uh, exclusive deals and whatnot. So they're making moves with ROH, and it just, you know, unless they get some kind of big blowaway offer, and I question where the hell Anthem is getting all of this money from, it just, I don't know that I see it. I don't know that I see Sinclair just selling ROH off to, uh, to the highest bidder like that. So I'll wait to hear it from a reputable source as to whether or not there's any, you know, smoke to this fire uh, but if they did buy Ring of Honor, I would think that they would just probably fold the roster uh, into the Impact roster. And if they did that, then that would spell the end of ROH. But right now it's all speculation. On the Access deal, what does it mean for Impact? Well, you know, Impact, it has officially been announced, is moving from Pursuit Channel to Access starting next month after Bound for Glory, I believe. Uh, I don't believe they've announced a date or time yet. Right now, Impact airs on Friday nights. Friday nights at 10 p.m. on Pursuit and on Twitch. If they're getting 10,000 viewers on Pursuit Channel right now, I would be stunned. That is how small of a network that is. And on a Friday night, no less. So you've already got a tiny little network that very few people have. Then you factor in the fact that it's a Friday night, which is not the best night for television. If Impact gets 10,000 people watching that show on Fridays, I would be stunned. And I don't even know that those pursuit numbers are, are publicly accessible to find out. But, you know, practically nobody watches Impact on Pursuit. So then you have Twitch. And I saw that on Twitch this past week, or last week, they peaked at around 3,300 live viewers for their last show. I mean, I've done live streams on YouTube that have done numbers like that. Me! This is Impact Wrestling. 
This is a company owned by this multi-million dollar company. Impact's been around almost 20 years. They're doing 3,300 peak viewers on a live Twitch stream. Now, yeah, a lot of people may go back in the archives after the fact and watch it, maybe. So the numbers bump up a little bit. But how much higher are they really being bumped up? You know, when when I, I'm not trying to sell myself short here, but, you know, look, when I'm doing videos sometimes that do more, and I'm talking live and post uh, combined, that do higher numbers than their Twitch streams do, that's a problem. That's a problem. So it's the age-old question, you know, if a tree falls in the forest and no one's around to hear it, does it make a sound? Impact, they have a talented roster. They may put on good shows. You know, certainly the pay-per-views I hear a lot of good things about. But if hardly anybody watches, does it really matter? The answer is no. It really doesn't. It really doesn't. And you need people to watch your product in order to grow your product and to sell tickets and make money and get you know new viewers to come in. So they had to get the hell off of Pursuit. And Access is a lot bigger than Pursuit. You know, it's not the biggest network. I don't. I still don't think I have access. <laughs> so I, I sure as hell didn't have Pursuit. Uh, not that I was watching Impact every week. If, I mean, if nothing else, I just haven't had the time recently. I'd love to watch MLW too. Uh, but I don't have Pursuit. Pretty sure I don't have access. So if I wanted to watch it, I'd probably have to just still jump on Twitch or, or something. And, and they may still air on Twitch. I don't think that's necessarily ending. Uh, but access is, is a step up for them. It's not Spike TV, but it is a step up from where they were when they were on Pop. It's a step up from where they have been on Pursuit. I think continuing to run the show, if, if that is the plan, on Friday nights would be a mistake. And now that they own the damn channel, they can pretty much put the show wherever they want. I mean, I mean, unless they have contracts with specific shows that specifically say it has to air on this night, it would seem to me that, you know, they're in the driver's seat here as far as when the day of the week and the time that they want to air Impact. To keep it on Friday nights, I think, would be dumb. Friday night is not a great night to begin with. I think Fox and WWE are going to probably realize that pretty quickly. But if the idea is to piggyback off of, you know, those uh, SmackDown viewers, once SmackDown moves back to Fridays, if that's the idea, hey, we'll piggyback. When SmackDown ends at 10 p.m., we'll go, maybe not live, but, you know, we'll, we'll go on Access and we'll have people changing the channel from Fox to Access and we'll get some of those wrestling fans, maybe not all of them, but we'll get some of them. You know, if, if that's the idea, I don't think you're going to see this mass migration of viewers to Access. Those people will have already watched two hours of wrestling. They're not going to watch four straight hours until midnight, no less, because the show would air from 10 p.m. to midnight. I just don't see it. I don't see that happening. You know, their best bet, I think, would be to put Impact on Tuesdays or Thursdays, which is their old night, either at 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. So they go from 8 to 10 or they go from 9 to 11. But the main takeaway here is that this is good news for Impact. It is not good news for anyone who is a fan of MMA programming on Access. It sounds like Anthem is axing all of the MMA stuff. Uh, and it's also not good for a lot of Access employees who lost their jobs this week after the sale was announced. Uh, according to a story on TheWrap.com, 40 people were laid off this week. PW Insider claims the network's entire Dallas office was shut down, which uh, Len Asper, the owner of Anthem, disputes he says the office was not shut down but he also refused to answer how many employees were left working there so if the office is still open it sure sounds like there aren't very many people left in that office now you've got mark cuban right selling off uh, and taking a, a minority interest in uh, access going forward he's a dallas guy you know he's based out of dallas which would explain why they have an office there in the first place if he's phasing out, you know, I guess it might make sense why they would leave Dallas. They have their own operations. I think Anthem really is is pretty much operating out of uh, Canada at this point. You know, but they have their own offices. And so maybe they look at it and they go, we don't need a presence in Dallas anymore. You know, this is unfortunately what happens in a lot of acquisitions. You end up with a redundancy of people who have similar job titles or have similar job responsibilities. And so what do you do? You ax the other company's people in favor of your own, or you get rid of those people because you want to fill them 
You want to fill those spots with people that you can hire yourself. Bring your own people in. It's like these rumors that have been around for years. Triple H and Stephanie, you know, they're not huge fans of Kevin Dunn. You know, if something ever happens to Vince McMahon, and then all of a sudden Triple H, let's say, and Stephanie ascend to power in WWE, a lot of people who think that Kevin Dunn's days are numbered. You know, because he's been a longtime Vince guy, and they're going to want to put their own people in there. I and mean, we'll see if that's true or not, but that's typically in these kind of situations what happens. That doesn't make it right. You know, I've seen the name Adam Swift. I'm sure you have too. That name has been mentioned a lot this week on social media. He's a lawyer. He had been working for Access for the last 11 years. He was instrumental in getting wrestling on the channel, Ring of Honor, when ROH was on HDNet, and New Japan. And he announced on Twitter that this was his last week with the company. Cindy Ronzoni. There's a name you, you may never have heard of before. She was another victim of the sale. She worked in PR and publicity for them. And I will say this. I have not had any uh, like major dealings or direct dealings myself with her. The person I typically would work with or I've communicated with at Access uh, is somebody else. You know, I get press announcements mostly from that person. And as of today, as far as I know, uh, I haven't talked to him about it, but he is still there. I believe he is uh, based out of their L.A. office. But Cindy had me on her list as well. And she would always get me announcements about you know, that WOW uh, Women of Wrestling show and any potential interviews that they would offer. And uh, I would always get emails from her. She was always, you know, on top of that kind of stuff. And so, as a, you know, as a fellow PR practitioner, because, you know, I obviously am in the same field, uh, I can say that she was, she was on top of things with that kind of stuff. And it sucks to see her lose her gig. A lot of people came out and name dropped her this week and had nothing but great things to say about her. You know, people who are good at their jobs, losing those jobs through no fault of their own, that's not something to celebrate. That's not something to be happy about. And, you know, you can say well, that's how all mergers and acquisitions work in the corporate world, but that still doesn't make it right. I can't say that Anthem and Impact have had the same kind of PR presence. And I say that as somebody who has actually worked with Impact before, uh, not directly, not like for the company, but when they have run events here in New York, uh, I've had experiences to work with their PR team at the time. I think all of those people now are all gone. <laughs> uh, a lot of them were actually gone not long after we worked together. And they had some pretty talented people and some good people working for them back then, too, who were very helpful if I needed something. Hey, you know, we're going to put something in the paper or whatever. Uh, and then over the years, they pretty much gutted that whole department. There was at one point impact completely like all but eliminated their entire PR department. And I don't know who they had running publicity for them. Probably nobody. Because this was during a period where the company would run events and people would say, wait, Impact came to town? I had no idea. And you'd have like 50 people or, or 200 people maybe at a show. But you had all these people who said, well, we didn't even know that there was an event coming to town. They didn't do any kind of advertising. They didn't do any kind of publicity. Well, of course they didn't. Because for a while there, they didn't have any PR department. Or if they did, they weren't doing their job very well. So, you know, I've, I've had the chance to work with some of these people, and I, I can only hope now that Impact has people in place who are going to be able to pick up the slack. Because if there's one thing this company is in dire need of, it's some good publicity and some good buzz and trying to get their name out there. And, you know, I'm certainly not on any kind of uh, media list. I certainly don't get any announcements from the company, which is fine, but I hope other people are. Because if not, you just let go of a whole bunch of people who could have done you a, lot, a world of good. Now, how all of this is going to play out with respect to New Japan is going to be an interesting situation to follow. New Japan has a show on Access. They have a contract that, according to The Observer, is said to run through January of 2021. And they're looking at it as business as usual. You know, we, we move on. We go on. How it's going to affect them remains to be seen. You have to think that Impact would love to work with New Japan, would love to form some kind of working relationship the way ROH has had with New Japan. New Japan has, I don't, I mean, I, I've not heard that they no longer have that relationship with Ring of Honor. 
Uh, they're not really actively doing anything with them, I don't think, at this point, but there is still that relationship. It would be funny if Anthem actually does buy Ring of Honor, but they buy it as a way to uh, finally get that working relationship <laughs> with New Japan uh, and basically puts them in a position where, well, <clears throat> if you're not going to work with AEW, which I still think it's crazy that the two are not working together, and I do think at some point that they will end up working together. It just seems like such a natural fit, especially with some of those, you know, the, the members of the elite that used to work in New Japan. Uh, you can have a talent exchange where New Japan talent can appear on TNT on the AEW show. Any AEW guys who might want to do a tour or a match in New Japan can go, you know, work some shows there every now and then. It just seems like a no-brainer. Uh, but I, and I, I don't know if there's hostility there. I don't know if they're just that loyal to Ring of Honor. Uh, but more so than Impact, I think New Japan getting in bed with AEW is is really the, the best decision to make. Just for the exposure for New Japan, what, you know, the exposure they could get on American television here. If I had the choice between Access and TNT, what do you think I'm going with? But Impact is now, or Anthem is, is now in the driver's seat. As far as what happens with New Japan's TV presence here in the U.S., will they form a deal? Well, time will tell. Still way too early to know for sure how any of this is going to play out. But on the surface, in it, to, to summarize all of this, great news for Impact. For everyone else, the jury is out. 